This is the Levels Podcast. I'm Justin Hoddle, joined by the Triple OG, Whittemann Mason. OG, it is round six preview time, mate. And uh, we are just chatting before the show. A couple of days ago, it looked like a pretty quiet yeah. week in the NRL world, but a lot has happened in the last 24 hours. <laughs> the soap era continues. You know what I mean? It's just, you can't even... Yeah, you know, every time you're looking on your phone, you're looking at NRL, you're looking at all these other little little uh, handles. It's like, man, nothing's happening. Next fucking next last 24 hours, everything bang, bang, bang. It's just like there's no point even trying to get topics, right? Until today or last yeah. night. Well, it's nice we spread our show out, isn't it? Like yeah. last year we were Monday, Wednesday pod, and yeah. sometimes it's a little bit too cranked. And I feel like yeah, hump day. Hump day is when stuff happens. Yeah, Wednesday. Maybe people get a little bit bored. Footy's not around. Yeah. They're getting edgy because news just seems to be flowing. No, we've timed it well. Monday and Thursday is the best days, I reckon. That's when the shit happens. Yep. So shit did happen yesterday. <laughs> Mel Meninga uh, is the priority candidate for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, uh, according to James Hooper from Fox Sports. So that'll be one of the main topics we address. Also, the Seagulls Se- have told uh, Josh Schuster that he is free to look for another club. Mm-hmm. So we'll address that. Yeah. We've also got team lists. Uh, we've got a few good questions. We've got some YouTube replies. Yep. Uh, we've got a few punters that uh, hit, hit me up in the comments, not only on YouTube, but they were chasing me all the way on Instagram. They, get you. they weren't happy about my Robbo and Brad Arthur take. So I'm going to explain that a little <laughs> bit more. They get you all the way on the DMs. In the- they, they jumped on the Daily Cherry Evans post and right. were hammering me about my <laughs> Robbo take. <laughs> so I like that. Look, everything – it's Everything your, that we your take, it's mate. my take, my opinion. But I, I feel start like, your own fucking show. I feel like I need to want. explain that one no, a little bit more. Yeah. I need to explain yeah, that one a little cool. bit more. Um, remember, for everyone that's been following for the what last fifteen months, they would have known that Lukey has the fight of his life coming up against the Paw Patrol baby yeah. up in the Gold Coast, April twenty seventh. Me and Mace will be up there. Uh, yeah, we'll and be in the corner of our little mate. And I know he's getting into it now. He's starting to get some reps. So if you want to get involved or follow the event, go on to Alpha Events Co. on Instagram. Uh, me, Lukey, and Mace were also discussing we're going to be doing maybe just like a we'll, – we'll go and attend a pub before up on the Goldie. And then if anyone wants to come and meet us and then go to the fight together. Okay. Uh, me and Mace have the golf day to, the day before. So we'll get up to Goldie about roughly around lunchtime. Yep. And then we'll get into it. We'll go have a – a few we'll schooners somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to a fight sober. Make sure we're, um, you know, maybe we start doing some <laughs> shadow boxing in and around Gold Coast you somewhere. Got any good suggestions, people? Slide in the DMs. Yeah, where, where to go? What was that, Lukey? Oh, and pay per view is available now. So if you want to see Lukey, yeah, just terrorizing. Knock this pub, knock this poor patrol guy out. See ya. It's fucking on. Um, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed lately. We are absolutely pumping at the ma- uh, at the moment, Mace. I've got a question for you. We're at twenty two point seven now, so we're on YouTube we're on YouTube. Yeah. So we're basically jumping at about two or three hundred per week, maybe even Shit. a little bit more. So you're flying, really good yeah. numbers. What's our target before Origin? Oh, when's that? Origin ten weeks? Uh, probably eight, about. Eight, just say eight. roughly anywhere between eight Jeez, to ten. Jeez, I reckon if we can get to twenty five. Twenty five is the target. Would be nice, yeah. All right, nice. Would be nice. Everyone who's just uh, we've had. Uh, uh, I sent a few comments. Um, people that have been following us for for ages and not yeah. even realised that they, they hadn't subscribed yet. So, uh, make sure you tell them, mate. Go follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Subscribe on Apple and Spotify, and leave us a podcast review. And while you're at it, thank you to everyone who has been organically mm. reviewing the BSC supplements. I know the bars and the energy drinks have been flying at the yeah, at good. the moment. Um, if you haven't tried the energy drinks at the uh, yet, uh, they have 160 grams of caffeine, no sugar, no carbs, and that has to tested and. Uh, Again, stuff like that really helps us out for the show as well, guys. So if you are indeed pumping the BSC uh, supplements, anything to do with BSC, let us know. Tag us on Instagram. Lukey will make sure he repost it on Levels Network uh, because they support us and we appreciate you supporting us as well. So yep. we want to support them back. Nice. Um, let's get to the YouTube replies, mate. So like I said uh, – People weren't happy with me comparing Brad Arthur to uh, Trent Robinson. Yeah, right. Now, what was your take again? So the take was uh, basically around have Brad Arthur and Trent Robinson maybe spent too long with the current playing group okay. that they got. Right. right? Remember how yeah, I was saying? That's not a bad take. Was you right. know how the message can go stale. Sort of out, go stale in one ear, out the other. Now I also did mention. So this one's from CJH. And I think he might have been the guy that chased us on Instagram. Brad Arthur is not even in the same league as Robbo. That's a shit take. He won three grand finals in that time. 
back to back. Brad Arthur has played in one and they didn't even make the eight last year. That's ridiculous. Uh, the next one is I love listening to Scopes. So from a Roosters supporter. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I love listening to Scopes' utter hate of the Chooks, trying to say uh, he hasn't done anything in 10 years. I must have dreamed a back to back. Well, you must have dreamt the part where I mentioned that they'd won back to back grand finals. And my take on it. I'm not comparing them as coaches, and I think people are really underrating what Brad's done. You were comparing done. the message, weren't you? The message. It? The message, not the coaching ability, not the grand finals. It's the message. It's the 10-year message. Yep. Is it as effective in the 10th year or the third or fourth year? Correct. That's it. And That's remember, the take. And, re- and like you even chipped in and go, Look, I'm sure they respect yeah. him. And I wanted to be clear that I believe the playing groups all respect both yeah. coaches, but the fear factor that Craig Bellamy – um, Wayne, Bennett. Wayne Bennett's of the world, even Ricky. Yeah, Ricky's uh, have, that. have that. You know, Ricky. That's probably his strongest suit, right? Mm. The fear factor. Um, it does Brad Arthur and Trent Robinson have that with the playing groups? We'll find out in the next yeah. couple of weeks. Because for me, there are two clubs that have been underperforming in the last year and five games. Mm. And and my biggest thing, if you're pissed off at me as a Roosters fan for. Um, being critical of the Roosters and people think I've got an agenda with the yeah. Roosters because of the 13 grand yeah, final. you don't. I could, could care. No. As in, I wanted to win that grand final, yeah, but- it's fucking 11 years ago. 11 years ago. Yeah. My So think about this. If you're getting angry at me for being critical of the Roosters and Robbo, and no disrespect to you and the Bulldogs, Mace, yeah. do you think they should have been down 26-0 against the Bulldogs in, that, in those conditions with the lineup they had compared to the Bulldogs? And they currently have- the same amount of wins as that roster at the Bulldogs. Mm. And we can all agree Fair point. that the Bulldogs are a rebuilding roster. They're yeah. trying to figure themselves out. On the Roosters side of things, they have James Tedesco before he got knocked out, yep. Joseph Manu, Joseph Swali, Dom Young, Daniel Tupo, Luke Keary, Sam Walker, Jared Rhea Hargraves, Victor Radley, Lindsay Collins, <laughs> Brandon Smith. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Angus Crichton. That list, and this is my point, this is why I'm critical of the Roosters and not the Bulldogs as much Mm. or the Tigers as much or the Raiders as much. It's the roster's too good. Now, if you're – again, if I keep going back to the point, if you're a Roosters fan getting angry at me being critical of the Roosters, it's because they've got literally everything that you'd be looking for in a team, but they're underperforming in my in my. I said a couple of weeks ago before, like when they dusted up South, I'm like, that's the team that could possibly beat the Panthers. They if they if everybody I always compare like one to seventeen if they all play to their potential. Yep. I look at I look at the Panthers and go yeah they're probably going to get in the grand final again and then you got the Roosters mm. to play who that who plays to their potential and gels as a team if they figure it out yes they're going to be very hard to beat yeah might just might be this little bit of a teething sort of problem that's still going on from last year they end up jagging a few wins last year getting yep. in the finals and then they they save it a, 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 a pretty dismal year for those guys they had to fucking. Work really hard the back end. Then they won. Got they won the first semi final. Got in the second they did, round yeah, of the playoffs. They beat the Sharks. So everyone th- thought, "Fucking hell! Thank God." Do you know what I mean? They had. A, a Otherwise, re- people would have been pointing the finger at a lot more severely right now at Robbo. Yeah, for because sure. Because he it, got them. Got them in the playoffs. They won a playoff game, and now this year they still got that same roster. It's a good point because you remember, right? They beat the Sharks. They uh, the Sharks just should, scraped in. They did, but Sharks should have beat them because they were running out of troops in yes. that game. So it was a great wing. That would have, you know, like gritty. This is why me and you both had the Roosters in mm. our top four, I believe, yes. this year to finish yeah. top yeah, four. Yeah. So off the back of those performances, remember how they go down to Storm in the very last minute yeah. with a Cameron Munster crossfield kick to Will, Will Warbrick, yeah. I think. So you're looking at that going, fuck, the Roosters figured it out at the back end of the season. They've got the cattle. There should be no excuses yeah. for the Roosters. And we have both picked them in our top yeah. four. So – when I become critical on the Roosters, that's the reason why. Um, and uh, I always try to say uh, – Just because of the talent. It's, it's the, the talent. talent. It's the talent. It's the talent. And that's why I like people And Robbo. I believe in Robbo as, as a coach. Yeah. People aren't as harsh on the bottom four, bottom six teams Correct. because of the simple fact that the roster is not there. You're not looking at a top four roster when you look at the bottom four, bottom six sides. You're like, yeah, they could – they'll battle. If, if everything goes right and everyone has career years, you might make the eight. Yeah. That's the mindset, right? Yep. Not – that roster, Parramatta's roster, that's why people are harsh on the, both those clubs because the rosters are top four rosters. Yes. That's the only reason why – Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just giving my opinion. But, mm. like, that's why the, the, the crit- critics 
the analysts of the game are coming out and having a crack at them, yeah. right? And it's the same as South Sydney, right? Yeah, too. and South are they harsh on South too? Because yeah. when you have a Latrell Mitchell, when you have a Cody Walker, when you have a Damian Cook, when you have a um, Cameron Murray in your side, you're expected to win games, right? So when you don't have the cattle, then no one really gives a shit. Yeah, you've had a good year. What a oh, geez, what a surprise packet this this team was. Blah blah blah. But when you have the fucking when you have that seventeen mm. that you just named before you, when you name Parramatta seventeen, and then all a couple other teams you're like underperformed. Yes. Then they start coming at the coaches. Then people can start getting sacked. Look what's happened to South. It's a fucking cutthroat game, mate. It's a great point you brought up. I'm just thinking about it now. If Roosters don't band aid, put a band over band aid over their middle part of the season, start of the season last year. Yeah. Essentially, Roosters are in a similar position, probably not as much because they didn't drop as many games. They had to fight hard to get into the finals, yeah. right? But the biggest uh, criticism of D Jason Demetrio and the Ra uh, Rabbitohs this year has been – I know they're only one win from the season. People wouldn't have mattered or cared as much if they had finished stronger at the back end of the season. But everyone keeps referring back to – they've only won one game since August last year. Yeah. So Roosters did a good job of fighting out of this rut that they were in mid-season yeah. to late last season – Winning a playoff, winning a finals game, uh, putting up a really good fight against the Storm. Yep. So people were giving you give it a pass. You give it a, a pass. pass. It's a pass. But then eventually, my my questions and my criticism and and where the drama I think might unfold is if they don't get results soon enough because they then, keep this roster on because they had a few injuries last year. Sam Walker got yep. dropped a few um uh, once last year. People and then he were was out injured. of form, injuries, and it, so everyone went okay. They fixed their season, saved something, got to the second round. Sweet. Now, every, full preseason, no injuries, everyone's on board. Yep. Now that they expect stuff. Yep. Roosters supporters do, the fans do. And I do. I think they'll, they'll come good. They need, Especially they need after to really figure it out, the halves. Mm. They look very disjointed. Especially after they started so well against the Broncos too. Yeah. You know, they looked great against the Broncos yeah. round one. Just need to give the so – they need to sort it out with the, the Kiri and the yeah. Walker thing, man. Yep, I agree. Um, so there you go. Uh, YouTube question for this week. This one's from Hogs one Sup, boys? L1 since day one with a heap of teams bringing back some old school jerseys. What are your top three or five jerseys of all time? So you talked about seeing the OG jerseys yeah, there. I like Mace. that one. I liked that one. It looked good. Tight, like, a bit I, tighter look, look, be, look, look better as well. Ours are bloody triple XLs. Yeah, yeah. What about um, the, old, the old Warriors jerseys look sick? Warriors. Are, the 95 yeah. uh, retro Warriors jerseys, like the day one jerseys look mad. Yep. You can't go with the Roosters. Roosters have always been traditional. Yep. Same as South, so you can't go anywhere near them. Um, you got to go with the the Warriors one, mm. that OG one, the mm. one that they rolled out in '95 was yeah. one of the best. I, I had a jersey like that in in, not, in when I was 15. I wanted that jersey, even yeah. though my dad forced me to go for St George. Yeah, and okay. I was secretly went for Canberra. <laughs> I just wanted that Warriors jersey because yeah. it looked cool. Yeah, it did. It's good so, colors game, mate. Eh? Yeah, it's good, man. They get um, they've always got good. Their marketing team's amazing over there. Yeah. I think um, I don't mind the Canberra one. The old Woodges one. I think that's just probably nostalgic. The one in 94 when they won. The milk jersey? Yeah, the milk. Canberra, Canberra milk. milk. Yeah. I like it when they roll that one out. Yeah. Um, who else? I don't mind the Bulldogs one. When we have the stripes yep. that's, and when we had the, we wore the black the black um, shorts and the, the blue stripes around, I love that one on us. Yeah. That's always a cool one. Some of the teams uh, going back a little bit to the 90s. Some of the the, the old Knights, Joey's Knights, 97 jerseys is pretty yeah. – uh, It's I, I suppose it goes back to the moments, right? But, like, yeah. I know the Knights have kept the same sort of scheme, but, like, oh, I forget what their sponsor was now, but it was – Penny Penny. Was that it? <laughs> nah, that was it? Impulse Airlines, no, I think it was. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what it was, but uh, I've, got a, I've got something for you, and I think this is something that we should have Im implemented into the game a long time ago, and this is a way of doing it. So the old school jerseys. Every team bring back a heritage jersey for a, a round, whether it be mm. – just say if you do it – I suppose you could do it in the, in the same round, but also maybe do on a – no, you could only Everyone do one just round. Do it, just one round, heritage round. Heritage round? Do they do that? No, they don't. So a few of the, few of the teams just bring it back at the start of the year for – Did you like the Broncos one? I didn't mind, did you like Broncos one's good. Yeah. yeah, that was all right. It looked good. So I think the Bulldogs brought it back for your 20 year yeah, anniversary. 20s, yep. um, the Warriors would, you know, wanted to focus around the the, the OG. They yeah. might have had some sort of meaning behind it. But what if they do this? And this kills two birds with one stone. A heritage jersey um, that you bring out for one round. I think these would sell. And for that for that one round for that heritage jersey, name and number on it as well yeah that'd be cool so you get a fucking heritage uh sean johnson jersey with a seven and johnson on it yeah and cap the numbers so this is where you don't end up with a shitload of stock maybe you have specific players yeah. uh, and no disrespect to anyone else in the team yeah, but sean johnson give, give him 200 
you, you have you have a shitload of Sean Johnson Chilbasa. jerseys. You have a shitload of RTS jerseys. You have a shitload of Wade Egan jerseys. Adam Fanor Blakes. You maybe pick five or six players from that team, and you know based off their popularity in the teams or, or, or a That's poll. What NFL do yeah. They only sell a certain amount of players. You know what I mean? They're not. You don't have a fifty-two roster, fifty-two man roster team with all their jerseys. Yeah. You got the QB. You got the main guys on defense, offense, and that's fucking it. That's yeah. all that sells. And they know what sells. Yeah. You know what I mean? The club it, should be know. easy. The club should know. It'd be easy money, mate. Easy money grab. Yeah, it'd be easy for you to pick the players right in every team. Because supporters will buy that shit. Yeah. I think that I think that'd be a good idea yeah. for the heritage round. Put the names and number on the so yeah. tell the sponsors we're going to do a heritage jersey that's a throwback for one round only. Name and number. Bang! I reckon these they, clubs got ideas, man. I reckon they sell the yeah. shit out of them. Um, this one is from Geo Met gents. Love the show. Great to listen whilst at the gym. Let's talk Jack Whiten. Mm. Is it safe to say that he would have regrets about his move? As an ex-player, tell us how you would feel leaving your best mates and longtime coach and mentor to join a rival club full of stars in the hopes of winning premiership in your final years in the game for to, for the club to explode and implode at the same time. Yeah, it'd be hard for Jack. I really feel for him because yeah. he's playing some actually good football. He's trying his, he's trying yeah, his, he's ass, trying off, his ass off. He's coming in. They have a kick down his side. He's one of those first ones, play play twos or threes, and he's just back fencing it like, like Val Holmes is. Mm. That's what you want to see from your center he's your marquee player what else can you do he's he, he's made that decision yeah and he's going to live with it he's not it, and it's only early days now mm. you know what i mean gonna, they might change coaches they might do this might be a little bit of a shuffle but like he will still play his best football yeah he'll still be happy he made it he knew the decision he was making and he's got to live with it it's mm. not a bad so who said it's a bad decision it might look bad right now it looks bad now it looks bad now but yeah. who cares let's talk in six months yeah. let's talk in two years like he signed a three or four year deal there like he, he, he's going to have success there. I think. I think I, he's playing. His, I think he's playing great football. Yeah, he's. He would be. It's a work in progress for sure. That left edge, and um, I know Demetria hasn't made the change yet. There's been chats about moving him to the halves. I think his best position with the club is the centers, but that yeah. was also with the mindset. I didn't believe Lockie Lewis deserved to be dropped. Yeah. He wasn't the problem for me. I think there were there are a few other issues, but. Um, we'll get to the coaching. I think our take on the coach. Yeah. I think me and you are different on this as well, too. Yeah. By the way, so we'll get into that, and I think that will explain it a little bit more. Uh, this one's from. But it's sorry. Well, how would you feel? Like I don't think it's a failure for Jack. Not, not yet. And he's not looking at Canberra going. Fuck! I wish I was back in Canberra. It'd be nice. You know, be like. I don't know. Like, if he'd love to win more, of yeah, course, he wouldn't yeah. like the blowtorch on him because he's not. He he hasn't experienced anything like that. He's in Canberra. Yeah. No one gives a shit. Do you know what I mean? Like. The only Can Canberra people love Canberra. It's like being in Newcastle. They love the Newcastle team. They support, support, support. He's in the fucking middle. He's in the most. He's in the side where they get the most controversy and all the scrutiny. bad media scrutiny. It's probably them, them the and Roosters, Parramatta. Bulldogs, Roosters. Para. Yeah. You cop it. You're in the melting pot here. Yeah. That's probably what he's not used to. Yep. So, but he's got a great family life, right? So he he can separate that shit. He's a smart kid, Jack. He'd be like, football's here, life's here. He also said though. Uh, when in, uh, uh, arriving at the start of the year, yeah. one part of moving to Sydney was the reluctancy to be involved in the fishbowl rugby yes, league. and it is a fishbowl. That's bowl. why he loved Canberra because he was just out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. He's, a, he's a country boy. He's, Not uh, here, mate. He's a family man. He's playing in a marquee club, blue chip club, yeah. foundation club. Yeah. People care when you play bad. People care when you play good. Yeah. I love the way he stuck up for Latrell too. Did yeah, you, he's, like, a, he's a stand-up stand dude, mate. He's a man. He's whatever, a whatever way you think about Latrell um, – of the issues that are there, and, and he's going to have the break. I love what they're were, they were trying to pepper him. There was a guy who stuttered when he said, I don't know if you've seen this, mate, but he yeah. basically, basically he was asked interviewing him, Jack? Yeah, he asked about Latrell, and he goes, oh, you can ask Latrell. And he goes, oh, well, you're one of his best mates. And he goes, yeah, well, if I'm one of his best mates, then I'm not going to yeah. throw him under the bus. Yeah. But the guy started to stutter as he I said it as that. well. Just, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Jack, I love Whiten, that Jack. Jack Whiten's the guy you'd love to go to war Stand with. Stand up, dude. Um, this last one is from Tyson Bennett. I've got a question for May specifically. Bulldog Richie has criticized criticized Ricky Stewart for standing down Jared Croker before his 300 game, told Benji the hours he's supposed to work, and told JD to grow a backbone. Since he knows everything, do you think he is the man to replace JD? <laughs> <laughs> I just I, know, I just wonder why. Like I get it with like um, <clears throat> you know like Bulldog Richie is a what well, I know him right. He used to write for the Telegraph, right? Yep. Does he still do that? Yeah, he yeah, probably does, yeah. yeah. Like he does that and 
well, you respect him for that. You write articles and all that sort of stuff. Yep. That's what your that's what your your realm is, right? Write stories on people, good stories, bad stories, whatever. You're a fucking writer. Yeah. You're not an analyst of the game, mate. Mm. That's the thing. That's the problem. I don't mind Bulldog Richie as a person. Mm. Like I see, I see him now, shake his hand and whatever. I don't have beef with him at all. But How like, did just you get Bulldog in- Richie too, by the way. I think because he's he looks like a bulldog. <laughs> Is it? I thought yeah. it was because he's a, like I thought he was a terrier. Like the well, articles that he wrote, maybe, maybe a little bit of both. That's it? Yeah, no, it looks like a he always wrote, he acts like, like a bulldog. He's, he's willing to get a little into little savage. A... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I just see yeah, and, and like and he sometimes <laughs> the analysts need to stay in their lane. Like you can't you can't critique Benji at coaching. You know you can't tell other players how to do this, and you know like stand people down and like you just write articles. You know what I mean? They, they get on this TV. It's a little bit of an ego, right? I think mm. they fucking oh, they 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 whatever they say is fucking worth something. A mm. little bit of weight it doesn't hold fucking anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Your stories, yeah. You're an article writer, write that shit. Like Buzz and Kent and all these blokes, they get on TV and they think they're fucking superstars. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. It's and players don't give a fuck what they say, no. right? And neither do coaches, and neither do anyone. Like, but they, I think, because Fox Sports given them a bit of a fucking uh, platform. They get up there and they can say whatever they want, Reedy, and they all sit around with Braith. Braith probably wants to fucking knock them all out. And doesn't doesn't love you, Braith. Yeah, we love Braith, but I look at that show. I'm, I can't cop that. Like they're trying to fucking run the game. Just write articles. They're good at that. Yeah. But when it comes to other other things, analyzing games and trying to critique the game, shut up. I seen honestly, s- like just don't don't just don't do it. I seen something in the punters and dribblers page, which is always pretty funny to have a look at every now and again, and that's the boys at Hello Sports. Yeah. Um, someone said, write an article, might not necessarily be true. Um, then everyone reacts to the article, and then you've got your story, yeah. and then rinse and repeat. And that's basically that's what it is, mate. Like, and it's terrible. It's terrible yeah. journalism. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like, and I said, I don't hate any of those journos. I just like just stay in your lane, write stories, and let the football analysts. And when it's, when you get other guys on there, let Braith in that talk. Let all the other football analysts, 40. experts, when it says football NRL expert under your name, mm. then you can fucking talk mm. about players and everything like and how Benji should coach. If a, if Wayne Bennett's on your on your show mm. and he says something about Benji, holds a lot of weight. Yeah, okay. No one Bulldog Richie says something. Just talk about you know, just don't analyze the game. That's even, where like what's where like even like punters and that just going, shut up, mate. Like yeah. everyone's just sick of your shit. Just fucking write your articles for the telegraph, get on there, tell your stories, and then that's about it. So to Otherwise, the question, do you think Bulldog Richie coached South Sydney? Well, he should, be in the, he should be in contention. <laughs> Russell, Russell Crowe should fucking yeah. actually give him a bit of time and say, what is your ideas? Can you, can you, can you tell JD how to coach? <laughs> All right, well, let's get to South Sydney's priority candidate. It's not Bulldog Richie, by the way. South Sydney Rabbitohs have identified Kangaroos coach Mel Meninga as the top candidate. In a left-field bombshell development, Fox League, which is being written by James Hooper, learned that the Rabbitohs board has been presented with a short list of possible candidates Mal, Madge and Benny Hornby who's currently there within the four walls already uh, Fox League understands that the Bunnies will cut ties with Demetrio after South Sydney's round six clash regardless um, when it was first reported that he had up until this game to mm. fight for his job uh, one do you think JD will be coach of South Sydney on Monday next week and two if not do you think Mel is a good candidate and if he is or is if he's not, who coaches South Sydney? Yeah. A few questions there for you. I'm just thinking, like, why would Mal want to coach? You know, like, I mean, has, has he got that itch again? Like, he played, he coached Canberra mm. uh, early 2000s. I remember I was playing against that Canberra team. Yep. Um, I'll get that up for his last time coaching was, you know, club level. Not that much success at, at club level. Obviously, a massive amount of um, success at a rep level. Yep. But that is not club level. You know, you had the best – Queensland side of all time and he had the best Australian team of all time one of you know what I mean like I said I think just dealing with club club land is totally different he's been dealing with the best arguably the greatest players of all time during that span from 2006 to whatever it is now like he's he's dealt with the best players in the game I'm surprised by his record it's is not. It it's not as bad as I. Sh- I thought. It was yeah, I don't a, think it's this, bad. I think it's probably like fifty percent. Last year was bad. Thirty-four percent. He ends up getting shown the door. So yeah. Canberra Super League year, mind you, is that with Ricky, Ricky still yeah, there? Yeah. Laurie, all those. Oh, good. Ruben still, Wiki, still Bradley good. Clyde. Yeah. So fifty-seven percent. They won twelve, lost nine. Um, in ninety-eight, ninety-nine, he went really good. They had sixteen wins, ten losses in yeah. in ninety-eight, um, and then it declined to thirteen and ten. So how does that how does that work out if he had 16, 20? Oh, they must have shortened the Short season. The yep. So 99, 13, and 10. Uh, and then in 
2000, bounced back again, 16 wins, 12 losses, 57%. Yeah. And then his last year, 26 games, he had nine wins, yeah. 16 losses. So he had a rough go so at the end. This is like, like why, why would Mal want to do that? Like, I think because he's been, he's been dealing with the best athletes and the best rugby league players since 2006. Yeah. And I don't think it's that hard to coach those guys. You just got to manage egos, personalities, give them a bit of a game plan, and they just do it for you. The Australian team works like a fucking well oiled machine. And when he had Queensland, they were fucking unbeatable, yep. right? And he had the best place. I don't know. He might be bored. Might might be getting that itch. Mm. Oh, I might. Mm. Want to, I want to. You know, fix. I want to fix South. I honestly don't think he really wants to coach. Just throwing his name up. It doesn't. No, it doesn't necessarily. I don't think mean, that. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure that he wants to coach. He's just throwing. just throwing his name in there. Well, there's been no but chat from him unless he's come out and go. I'm not believing it until Mal Meninga comes. And goes. I want to. Pl- I want to be South Sydney's coach. Okay. So that's, right Other than that, it's a load of shit. Yeah. So that's important. This is reported from James Hooper. Now, I think it's reported that South are keen on Mel for the interim, right, to finish right. the season. That'd be um, perfect then. If if that was the case, and this is like not confirmed by Mel because he's currently got, I think, two more years as Australian coach, yeah. goes all the way through to 2026. I like the idea of Mel for an interim. I do. Yeah. Um, because this is what I think. Uh, the problem with South Sydney is at the moment. They've, for me, they've got all the pieces still there. And they're, they're as underwhelming as the Roosters is what we've been talking about at the moment. But the one thing that they sort of lack at the moment is any direction or in and around the club. So Mel, we can both agree, Mel's a legend of the game. He's an immortal. Uh, he's got a presence about him. I feel like that's what South Sydney need. The X's and O's they don't need. No. I mean, the left sh- – so if you look at the, the – when, any, when anyone thinks about the South Sydney Rabbitohs, what do they think? That left side yeah. shape, stripping it down the outside. Now, they haven't had a problem. As, as bad as South Sydney have, they haven't really had a problem with that left side shape. The problem is when they've stripped teams apart, they've tried a banana kick in or they've missed the last pass mm. or they fucked up. If you look back to the Broncos game specifically and Roosters, yep. it's because they're chasing points. So what South Sydney have lost that they had with Wayne Bennett is – Someone being able to give them a rocket, you know, we don't have to score on every play. So when you do have that nice shape, it's not like teams have learned how to defend yeah. that left-hand shape. It's just South Sydney no longer have the patience in building to get into those spots to make sure they can have some joy. Yeah. So maybe Mel brings that. I maybe maybe if, maybe Mel holds them accountable in the video sessions. If you are, if you know what Mel Meninga, if you, you're right on, if you know Mel Meninga, what he does have is presence, yeah. what you just said. He's a fucking scary motherfucker. Mm. And I don't think JD has a presence and he can't control Cody Walker and he can't control Latrell. Mm. I'm going to tell you who can, Mal Meninga. One of the most highly respected humans who's ever played the game and no one fucks with him. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Do you know what I mean? So when he says shit, it fucking holds a hell of a lot of weight. So if you'll, you'll pull anyone up and you will shit yourself. Yeah. I'm telling you, you could be the hardest dude. You could be the biggest blow, like the most undisciplined person in the world that you'll get pulled up by Mal. You're fucking done. Yeah, you, he'll, he'll shake you. You know it's, what I mean? And it I seems think to me they that need it, that. Yeah, that's where. That's why I think Hoops might be on something. He obviously, Hoops is a good reporter. He, he must have a little bit there. If he comes into the interim trying to fix, you know, it's all about Latrell and Cody. Yeah, we've got to get those guys on the same page. They need a little bit of discipline. They need to respect the coach. I'm not saying they don't disres- They don't respect him, but it just comes comes off like that. They're running. They're running, they're running the joint there. It, it come out of nowhere so much that it's like you know when it's so random. That you think, oh fuck, this must be the case, right? Because yeah. no one had, like, we were all talking Wayne Bennett, uh, yeah. Madge, Madge, Madge was tossed up, which is another one that people, you, can't you know, do that, but now. yeah, no, but like yeah. to say, if maybe because he doesn't have a long term contract with New South Wales as well, mm. and he hasn't even fucking coached for New South Wales no. at this point, so maybe he could have got through one series and then goes, oh, I'd, no. I'd like to become a club coach again, and I, I think that there's, um, there, it's something he'd be interested in. Mm. I think he's probably got more of an itch. Than Mel to do it long term uh, yeah, after sure, he finishes sure. Origin, but yeah, it come from left field so much that it makes me think that it probably there is something to it. Only because of the fact that the weight that it's Mal Meninga, right? And they need to find respect for their coach again and the system they need and to everything change like culture. that. Change the culture. He's that dude. Mal's that dude, man. And um, they're not dumb trying to get him. Yeah. Even if, if, even if it's just for the interim, trying to trying to save us something for this year. Yeah. And look, I, I feel like they'd be looking for someone long term moving forward, but you. Do you agree with me? The problem isn't the X's and O's, which no. isn't Mel's strong point. Ben Hornby and all these other assistant coaches, they can do all that. They can Mal run Meninga the shape. just needs to be Mal Meninga. Yes. 
Hold just people accountable. There. Hold people accountable. Just be be him. Be in video sessions. Yes. Stand in there like a presence. Yeah, ben Hornby's right. running through uh, video He's sessions. Dude, man. Mel's just standing there looking at it, <laughs> going like quiet. No one's, you know, like those are things that probably uh, you'd know this better than yeah. me. Um, that everyone talks about Wayne. Wayne wasn't yeah. a massive X and a, X's and A's guys, but if he's sitting there in video, just just watch, sitting there, just watching video like that, and you know you're fucked up, you're gone. He's not even watching the video. The video's behind him. He just stand, he's sitting there like, <laughs> look, looking at you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah, so yeah, interesting to see how that plays out. It seems like he would be uh, the interim coach anyway for the rest of the season for 2024. Uh, regardless of whether the, mm. the Rabbitohs can put up a performance against the Sharks anyway. So uh, topic two, uh, the Seagulls have told polarising forward Josh Schuster he is free to look for another club. Schuster is currently playing reserve grade on a whopping 800000 per season uh, and that's extended for three years last, last year. Uh, the 22-year-old was put back in the forwards this season uh, by Manly coach Anthony Seabold after failing to bid. Yeah, Seabold confirmed to Fox Sports confirmation from Seabold himself on Wednesday that he has given Schuster permission to find another club. So, one, do you think Josh Schuster leaves or digs his heels in? Two, what's your price for Josh Schuster right now yeah. and how much do you think oh, Manly are going to have to chip in? Yeah, yeah. He ain't going to go nah. anywhere for... Go okay, answer the and first this, question. This is not his, this is not his problem, right? Yeah, you know, like it depends how much he values money. If he prioritizes money, he'll dig his heels in and he'll go. You know what? I'm going to get back in the side, and you're going to have to play me. If he does, you know, if he wants all his money. Or, Other than that, if he leaves, Manly's going to have to chip in at least five hundred. Yeah, I think at least half. Yeah, and then someone get him for about one fifty. I think minimum four. One, yeah. I'm thinking that, and then someone will throw him maybe 200. Do you so think he'll end up with six? No, I, I, I think a 4 4 split is because you've got to look at the potential that he's got, right? Do you yeah. think teams I are going to gamble no, for a 4 people won't pay 400. Okay. No, I reckon so. If he can negotiate 5 3. Not, this is not his problem. This is Manly's problem. You're yeah, going to sign correct. a kid for 800 just on his, on just say, because you think he's going to be good. Yep. That's your fault. Mm. This is not his fault. If he wants to, if he, for me personally, if I was him, I'd be like, fuck this. I'm going to get fit as hell and prove to everyone that I'm, I am that dude. And stay there, because other I'm, I'm thinking I'm telling yeah, you, you the other the other the other teams aren't willing to pay that much money for him because they've, he's shown in the last two or three years inconsistencies. They want that as a as a as a player. You want him to be consistent mm. and going at it and a little bit of fucking resilience, playing bigger minutes, all this sort of stuff. So coaches are sitting there going, he hasn't proven anything to me. Yeah. I'm, paying, I'm paying this kid on just like what, what he can be, not what he is. Yeah. One and thing. I hated that because then I'll be I'll be fucking staying at Manly, pay me every single fucking cent, and I'm going to get back into first grade, and then we'll set, we'll talk about it at the end of the year. You know why that doesn't happen, Mace? And you 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 start oh, no, putting pro happen, you, you're putting priority on cash. Yeah. You never played New South Wales Cup yeah. after being – it's tough, mate. It's mm. tough. And, and and not a knock to the boys, but once you establish yourself in first grade, and I wasn't even like a star, yeah. but it's so hard when you go back to, down to New South Wales Cup, one, to stay motivated. Oh, it would be you, hard. You I know, lose, I know, mate, I know. you lose the energy of being yeah. in, in crowds. You're not playing with the same skill set that you played with in first grade. Yeah. So all, Players. all these factors, mate, when you actually go back down and start playing New South Wales Cup – it just, you know, chips away. And like I said, because I was a different style of level of player, yeah. I knew that I had to sort of work hard and I couldn't sulk. If I sulk, then you'd – they'll just brush me. Yeah. Like my contract yeah. wasn't worth it. So when you say that he's sweet, he can just go click his paycheck, it's not as simple as that. Like no, players, what do you, what this do you is why players him? never what do, do you, it. What do you do with him? I try to find – I think you're right. Get as, I, sorry, sorry. Get as much money as you can out of Manly because it's their problem. Yes. It's their problem. Yes. Sit there for fucking four weeks, play reserve grade. Whatever. Oh, I've got a hamstring problem. You know what I mean? Like he can he can do that. He mm. can do that and do side side training, whatever he wants to do. There's ideas, there's, there's things out there for him. I'm not going to play. I'll just turn up the train and you still got to pay me every single cent mm. and then train your ass off on the side. Go do some fucking Roger Fabry sessions. But then just don't let him film it. But then he's <laughs> I'm, joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I know, I know. But I'm just saying yeah. there's there's things around it until Manly go, all right, we'll pay you six hundred, get one hundred hundred and fifty from another club. Then you got seven fifty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, too, that's, it's very that's, hard. I don't. If I'm negotiating from Manly, I'm like, oh, I'll give you three hundred. He's like, fuck off. So no, I think the other way. So I think it'll be a four four to let him go, and Manly would be. Put, it's similar to the Brooks situation, right? Remember how much money yeah. Brooks is on, and 
there were teams that were in, interested in Brooks, but they were unwilling to take the million dollar price tag that yeah. the Tigers had put on him. So like teams were going, you pay five or the reports were teams were willing to take on Brooks for that last year or, or second last year or whatever it may be, but they wanted the Tigers to chip in for it. If, you, if you're really going to do it and you're going to have to go, all right, fuck it, we're going to have to hit this on the cap, I think a 4-4 split is reasonable for both parties. Um, and I look at – I've got three teams, I think, yeah. uh, and they might surprise you. No, I'm, 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 I think a lot of teams would be surprised would, – would be, would be All right, who would be – All right, who would be your teams willing to take him on? Do you want me to go mine first? Go yours, yeah. I'm going to go three teams that have really strong cultures – that could do with taking on a player at that number mm -hmm. and almost having a crack to see if they could their coach could bring the best out of him. Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> Penrith Panthers and the Warriors. Those three teams could just say if you get a player of Josh Schuster's talent, but his biggest problem is I think he needs clubs like that, to be honest. His work ethic and all those sorts of things. Now you're probably not going to play a three year deal. I know Melbourne and Penrith and Warriors would never do that. But with whatever happened, if they were able to, I think all those three teams, they were able to bring him in, harness his potential and uh, create, put this work ethic and, and accountability and, and uh, you know, just being around in a, a winning culture and what it takes to be a winner, then yeah. he could potentially become – In two years, they, people could view him as that 800,000 player that he is on. Well, Luai's gone. If he just went there like and just learned off the best how to, how to train, how to play – like he's a 5'8", right, with a skill set's very high and he mm. can stick on that left side of the field. He doesn't like travelling on that other side. No. So he's a left side player predominantly. What does Luai play? Left side predominantly all the time. Mm. So if, if Penrith are fair dinkum – the skill set there. If you get the best out of Josh Schuster, he's a game winner. It could be unders, right? Four hundred, you know I mean? three fifty. Yeah. Could be unders. Like he's not going to. If you're him, you're not going to go to a lower club, mate. That's going to no. not. I wouldn't. If I was in a, so if I was a, very a rebuilding deal, club, I very wouldn't touch him. Important decision for Josh Schuster. It could be career defining or career ending. You know what I mean? Like he's going to. I want him to go to a good club. I want to see the success that he can. He can actually have because he's just shown us little bits, little glimpses. Like mm. fuck. Get that shit every week, kid, mm. and you'll play for Australia. Yeah. Get that toughness in you. Get that, you know, start hanging around Liam Martin all fucking week. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, imagine if you imagine him in the Penrith system. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he's, he, Left he's on right that. against Liam Martin and Nathan Cleary every week. Every uh, Iron sharpens iron, just getting yeah. him better and better. Obviously, it's not working over there. Yeah. You know, the coaching could be different. It could be, yeah, I know something, something's not getting the best and, out and of him. And it might, it's look, and this isn't a knock on the man, because I think Manly are yeah, doing some good just things, right? Suit him. But because he's been a part of that system, sometimes a change is good for both. It's what I always said about Brooks as well. Like if you look at the way – Brooks just looks happier at Manly. Yeah. And it's we said for two years, Brooks isn't the problem with the Tigers. The Tigers – yeah. And and the Tigers aren't doing a disservice to the to Brooks or yeah. or vice versa. It's just they're not working at the moment together. And this is only earlier in his career, but yeah. I think uh, Schuster could do with just advice. Well. Just advice for him. Just take your time with this. Mm -hmm. Don't get don't get pressured by the media. Don't get pressured by the club. This is a fucking your decision. All right, you're mm -hmm. in the power position. Even though like they're trying to, they're, they're saying you can have an immediate release. Don't fucking go straight away, man. No way. Have some very he important won't. meetings. I know I know that, but just with some. Big clubs that can make you a better player, better person, and get success. Don't go to a rebuilding club, mate. Go to those three teams that you just said. Yep. Letting everyone know about my levels, bets, friends, special for this week. Uh, Eels, Cowboys game. I think this is going to be a score fest. Uh, both these teams hate to defend, uh, but they love to score. So yes. I'm going to go total points. Over 46 and a half, and I'll have Tom Chester to score in the first 60 minutes. He is replacing the injured Zach Labert. Uh, the traders have given us a price of $7.50 with a max bet of $25. So let's get right. into previewing All right. the teams. Kicking it off Thursday night, or tonight actually, uh, Newcastle Knights are at home to the Sydney Roosters at McDonald's Jones Stadium. Coach Adam O'Brien has selected uh, the same 17 with making no changes, but... On the extended bench, mate, we've got Greg Mazu. Uh, he has been named. It's you. All right, run us through the roosters, mate. Yeah, we've got Joey Manu, Toops, Jennings is starting. Yep. Uh, Suali'i, Pongo, Punga. Punga, yep. Uh, Connor Watson at 5'8". Yep. Luke Keary, half. Hargrave, Smith, Collins, Nat Butcher, Crichton, Victor Radley. Zocker Clay, Nafal Zocker White. Clay. Zach, <laughs> Zocker, <laughs> Zocker, Zocker, Zach Docker Clay. Tupanua, Terrell May. So not a bad side. Yep. Pretty solid. But – um. I fucking like Newcastle. 
Mm. But then I look – only because Teddy was out and then I looked who replaces him. He goes all right. Joey Manu goes all right at fullback and they're going to be pissed off. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm Roosters now. Are you going Roosters? <laughs> Just, all right. I've the, switched up. Our partners at the tab have Newcastle Knights favourites at $1.58, yeah. the Roosters $2.40. The line is plus four and a half, so I, I, yeah. I'm gathering you like the plus four and a half, mate, because I'm with you. I'm going the Roosters, despite everything yeah. I said about uh, Robbo this week. I'm going uh, the Roosters plus four and a half. God, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I love Joseph Manu at fullback, mate. So you give me him any time at fullback for two dollars sixty. I'm going to take that. I like the Roosters plus four and a half. Joe Manu any time at two dollars sixty for my bet this week. But it just shows. So just some. My mindset is they're a fucking old school team. They have got some tough heads in there, man. With Hargraves and Lindsay Collins and Victor Radley and you know like Joey Manu, they'll be filthy last week. So you know, and all it's the a hard shit, form and line. all the shit. I know it is all the shit that's been said about the coach. All this they love fucking Robbo. Yeah, like this would be for Robbo. Like, I think this would be all there. Robbo, to be fair, no, there's, I, I there's, there's every, some fucking. There there, there's, I've, I've seen okay. some other people like just little little murmurs are starting to appear. Okay. Right? You know, they love him so much and have so much respect for him. I think they'll be like, you know what, fuck everyone. Mm. Be one of those games, man. Scout the scout the Newcastle, fucking hammer him. On their own ground. You know what will be interesting, and I said this before, I was on the potty with Kempi last week as well, and we're talking about this and see if this yeah. resonates with you. Um, we've said it a couple of times now where the Roosters, you've never really seen Luke Keery and Sam Walker play a mad game together. Never. You know what I mean? Like where they've combined together. Sam Walker's had gun games. Yeah. Luke Keery looked outstanding last week uh, once <laughs> Sammy Walker, bless you, mate, yep. once uh, Sam Walker went off. So when Luke Keery missed that game with HIA, mm. Sandon Smith Sandy and Smith, Sam Walker. They looked unreal. If Connor Watson and, and um, Luke Keery go well in this game and they look like they've got some sort of rhythm, I think that is, for me, going to explain what the issue is with, with the yes. Roosters. Yeah, clearly, clearly, because it's, it's the blueprint's there. One has to go. Mm, could be. Who Who is it but? Sam Walker's 22 years old, Keery's – Probably closer to thirty. I'm trying to say, trying to think. Yeah, it'd be been around for a minute. Yeah, played the 2014 grand final. So you go with the guys who's won three comps. Yeah, do you go with him or do you go with the future of the club? How hard? How hard is it to come? Tough one. And I think I think Kiri, if they said, all right, mate, that's you know we want we're going to go with Sam Walker. He could get another club for a million dollars a year. Ooh, eight fifty. Something around there. He's still he's still he can still control a team by himself. Yes, he can. Play seven. You know how it is to come across a good seven, right? Mm. And you but you can't have two. Gun sevens in your team. It's not working for them. Oh, yeah. I think that's the problem. I think you can have sort of two – I'd say my example would be two – I believe at his best Mitch Moses is a six. A, a six. Yeah. So you can have two sixes who uh, don't get in each other's way too much. So Mitch Moses and Dill Brown play really well because they take turns. Yeah. Even Cherry was why does, why Cherry does, was a six for an yeah, early so part too. of his career. So that's he why he – Because he was quicker. Him and Fozzie worked together. They were – both pretty much five eights. Why does Jerome Hughes and Munster work so well? Sixes. Both sixes. They're fucking runners, mate. Yeah. And one just hugs that left side. They, they don't try and overplay each other. They complement each other better than any other halves. Yeah. They shit. do, mate. And last week proved it. Money, money's money been out the whole year. Comes mm. back, fits straight in like a glove. Jerome Hughes takes all the runs, all that sort of shit, opens it up. From, it's perfect. That's the best combination in the game. Even better than Cleary and Luai. Yeah. When they're rolling, when they're yeah. rolling, because Luai don't, he just, he just stays predominantly on that left side. Yeah. Munster can go wherever the fuck he wants. Yeah, I think you can have a obviously your seven and a six is your perfect complement for each other, which is yeah. Nathan Jerome. But like you look at Dill and uh, Moses yeah, are closer like to two five eights than they are two two sevens. Well, you can, it's proven that Dill Brown isn't a seven, like doesn't suit the seven in, in my opinion. Uh, Munster and, and Jerome are closer to, to being two sixes. Um, Kieran and Daly, when they played together at Manly for those periods, were closer yeah. to two sixes than they were, they were yeah. a seven and six. So it's interesting. I don't think you can have two sevens. Like you can't have – the way I see so it, so guys that want to be on the ball. I think Kieran and um, Sam Walker are both, both sevens. Halves, eh? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Right. Um, Newcastle, though, we're both against Newcastle. You good form line last week back at McDonald's Jones. I just think about what happened to the Roosters last week mm. and what sort of what sort of um, what sort of plays they got in that team. They have got a bunch of dogs that can turn it on. Okay, they'll be disappointed from last week. Yeah, 
And he nearly embarrassed. Scares me. It, this pick scares me. Um, also, I'm going to be calling this game with the boys tonight. So I'm going to be on with the Hello Sports boys. Yeah, nice. Come and watch us on the stream later tonight. Uh, should be a giggle. Always fun doing it with them. Uh, tomorrow, first game, 6 p.m., Melbourne Storm versus your Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, mate. Uh, Tepai Marai is the new name on the bench for Jack Howarth. Uh, in the extended bench, watch out for Big Nasty. He's in the extended oh, no. bench. This is the first time he's been named on the extended bench too, mate. So yeah. um, we'll see if he ends up playing some time. Tomorrow night. Um, as for your Bulldogs, mate, a heap of changes. Stephen Crichton is at fullback in replace of Blake Taff. Yep. Uh, Jacob Carraz has shifted to the centres to make way for Fox on the wing. Kurt Mann has been ruled out, which sees Jamin Semmon back into the starting lineup. Mudders Curran goes into the starting back row position. And the young Chris Keating lookalike slash Jaden Braley slash a whole heap of guys. Bailey Haywood. What a great kid. Well done, Bailey. Uh, has been, been named grinding. to make his NRL debut while Poasa Farmasuli also joins the bench. So a lot of changes, mate. Yes. And, and probably Max King is in danger. He's, like, he's got a fractured wrist, but Maxie I think he can King. play. I think Maxi King has been ruled out as well. Yeah, so, so that's a really big loss. I mean, yeah, I mean, for such a great win last week, there's a, there's a fair bit of a – Collateral damage, isn't it? Yeah. It sucks. And, uh, um, and, and and I guess that sort of plays into the fall off at the back end of that game as well. They had a few – had a lot yeah. of people busted at the back end of that game. Chris Patola goes into the starting lineup as well. He's been, he was, he's been injured the last sort of, uh, I reckon, 10 months. Yep. He's the future of the club, that kid. He's yep. a perfect, oh, wow. perfect size for a front rower. Yep. Perfect build, hits like a truck. He just hasn't seemed to be able to get on the field and play bigger minutes. Okay. But he's got all the attributes. He's got soft hands. He's, got, he's one of your prototype props, right? 6'3", 110 kilos, can move, hits like Solomon Hamano, bro. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he just, wow. Yeah. Just like, needs to get minutes. Just needs to get minutes under his belt, get him like, you know, 25 minutes in the middle consistent, consistently. You know, remember a couple of years, he was going right and then he had a mad head clash yeah. last year. Yeah. So he just keeps getting injured and, you know, when he's going like that, comes back down with an injury. Last year, he done his knee. So we have been, he's a really, really good kid. I love Chris. We have been spoiled in recent history with young front rollers hitting the scene so yeah. quickly and just becoming stars, teen, you know, pains yeah. of the world. But most of the time, the, the old front rollers, generally they normally 23, 24, yeah. 25. Yeah. That's when they that's hit. That's where he's at. That's yeah. their peak. It's so he's year, still got so. plenty of time. I'm going to go to the Storm, mate, minus seven and a half, I think. Uh, they're the form team of the competition at the moment. And the money man looked pretty good last week. He was bouncing around, look uh, looking lively. So I think he is going to be an anytime try scorer at $3. Well done to Bailey Haywood too. Yeah, young congrats, kid, mate. Young, um, young uh, local junior. He's been, um, been in the system since he was 15. And he's just been grinding and grinding and grinding. A few injuries here and there, and now he gets his opportunity. So good on him. Awesome. Uh, this game's going to be a grind, mate, at 8 p.m. Brisbane Broncos at home to the Dolphins to the Battle of Suncorp. This is our house, baby. <laughs> Reese Walsh is <laughs> Who's going to say it? We'll see. Katoni, Who's going to say it? Katoni hit him, at the, hit him at the end of the game. Let's see what the uh, Dolphins Check. have got in reply. Bring the hammer's got something back. The hammer, he might have it in him. Nah, hammer's the hammer's he's, yeah. he's got his trademark. Yeah, he ain't broken away. And then do that. No, that'd be sick. Uh, Reese Walsh is back, mate. So Tristan Saylor um, moves to the bench. Jock Madden has been named to replace Adam Reynolds. Dean Mariner is out as well with Corey Oates moving to the wing. And Xavier Willis Willison is in on the bench. Uh, Benjamin Takuda looked like the player to make way, but they yeah. also had someone – Jordan Ricky could be missing from this game as well, mate. So watch out, out for, watch out for that yeah, tomorrow. He's out. he's out. As for the uh, the Dolphins, Herbie Farnworth will miss a few weeks. Therefore, Tessie New is back. Felice Kafusi also did his hammy with that try assist to Hamaso. So Muttis Bromwich is into the starting lineup with Muttis Wallace, the new face on the bench, with Muttis Milford replacing <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Donahue. So shout out to uh, Anthony Milford, Jared Wallace, and Kenny Bromwich all going to be yeah. playing a big part of this game. Um, Reese Walsh, big, big in. Yeah. Um, you just got that X factor, man. I just, and I, I, we, the Dolphins beat those guys last year, didn't they? It was massive. No, so Katoni gets him at the end, hits him with the their house. Did, did someone, they, did can they you win look last and see? Year? Did the Dolphins beat them at Suncorp last year? I'm pretty sure. No, they I, don't did think early. They, I don't think they did because that was the early game because that was all was the time. Was it our house? Was yeah. that Catoni early? That was like week four or five because that's when Catoni was like, this is no, the young house because they were so playing so the Dolphins won their first game, didn't they, against um, the Roosters? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, yes. well they didn't. Yeah, so um, Broncos. Lukey, look for us. Are you in there, Lukey? Yeah, you got to see. He's loving a look. Yeah, Bronx. Bronx. And, no, and I got mate, it wrong because they beat the Roosters in that first game. That's right. I, yeah, I was thinking they got the uh, Bronx. Um, the tab have got Brisbane Broncos dollar thirty five favourites, mate, with Reese Walsh back three dollars twenty five about the Dolphins, and the line is seven and a half. So, do you think who do you think is going to win first? Broncos. 
Do you think they're going to beat them by more than a try and a bit? Yeah, I reckon, yeah. Big. I think so. Because for Kafusi's out, he's okay. a massive loss. Yep, I, I agree. They played twice, Lukey? They played twice, 24-16 in July. Yep. Broncos and 18-12 in March. Okay, so they beat them twice. But it was um, right in that range, mate. 24-16, to 16, Lukey said, oh, in July. See, I'm not... I'm not that I'm not that sold yeah. because of um Bromwich and Flegler and you got Fletcher Baker and Corey Jensen and you got Carry and you got Ricky out so I'm not sure who you're going to start then mm. you just got Carrigan the bench is quite small fuck I might I might go to the Dolphins are you going to Dolphins head to head yeah, yeah. oh well, so am I, mate. Yeah. I'm I on the Dolphins. Them. I like the form line of Dolphins better this year, so I'm going the Dolphins. But I love the plus seven and a half as well. Um, we're doing our tips for the social with the tabs. Jock Madden's in there. I'm Ezra Man has to take over a fair bit. They'll, they'll be, it'll be a good game. But I just, if, if they play to their strengths and they keep playing how they are, the Dolphins should win. Huge game for Isaiah Katoa. He's looked mm. great in the last couple of weeks. Oh, my anytime try scorer, by the way, is I'm going for three in a row on him. Hamasai Tabuai Fido. $2.75 is overs. Overs, overs for the hammer. Uh, so give me Dolphins plus seven and a half, Hamaso, Tabuai, Fido. This is one of my favorite sort of bets of the weekend too, this one. I really like this bet. So therefore, Broncos are going to pump them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm lo- really looking forward to this game. Very intriguing. Um, it sucks that Herbie Farnsworth is, mi- is missing. It would have been a good matchup with uh, him on the yeah, right against Selwyn Cobbo. Tessie News, he's an ex-Bronco. So yeah, pers- he'll be per- pumped for it. personal with him. But that would have been a good. That would have been good. You know what? It's good because Herbie Farnworth was the left center. Yeah. Uh, and he moves to the right for the yeah. Dolphins, so he would have come up against Sam yeah, Cobo for the battle of that spot yeah. from last year. So uh, I was in. I was How really looking Herbie forward to that battle. Is it a serious? A couple of weeks. AC joint. Come on, AC. Mate. Yeah. Just so he's going to miss. Jab it. You'll be back. No, um, I'm joking. Shout out to Jersey Flagler. Uh, <laughs> he had. He had. He did, he's going to. Uh, he's going to be filthy. He's going to go hard. Just He's going to go at Carrigan. You watch. He's going to yeah. go at Carrigan. Okay. Beautiful. Um, the first game of Sat- a Super Saturday, the New Zealand Wars take on the Manly Seagulls. This will be another good one at Go Media Stadium. Uh, Dallin Watson as the Lesniak is back. Therefore, uh, Adam Pompey drops out. Kirk Capewell also returns, meaning Mitch Barnett moves from the back row into prop. And then we've got a couple of uh, new changes on the bench. As for Manly, Ben Travojevic will start at centre uh, with Ruben Garrick. Miss, got a, he has the 11-day stand down. Uh, Corey Waddell will start on the left edge for Ben Travojevic yeah. and Ethan Bullimore is the new guy on the bench who has performed well when he's played this year as well. That would be good. Um, the tab have got the Warriors obviously favourite at $1.47. Uh, Manly at $2.70 and the line is plus six and a half. So it's a try favouritism towards the Warriors. Mace, we good gum. game, man. Yeah. I'm only heading towards the Warriors because it's over there. It's a hard one. Is it Saturday night? Saturday oh, afternoon. 3 p.m. That's a good that's a good time. So that'll be 5 p.m. their time, I believe. Yeah. Are they in front of us? Are they in front, Lukey? I think I so. I think so. I think it's a 5 p.m. Yeah. game for them. So, so it's 4 o'clock. No, no, no. We, we're all confused. Don't worry about it. They're going to be playing in the afternoon anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Celestia <laughs> being back is mad. Yeah. He just balances that whole back five out. And four, everything's unchanged. They just get stronger. Egan's getting better. Kate Wall's back. It's going to be hard. Mm. It's going to be hard, man. Um, You're on the wasp. Yeah, I'm on the Warriors. You're on the Warriors, yeah. No, Warriors. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Manly. My bias gets me Manly every week, yeah. as you know, if you watch it. Same as Mace with the Bulldogs. I'm on Manly plus six and a half. And Tommy Turbo looks about still 80% to me. Yeah. Uh, but he showed some good signs. The couple of weeks ago, he streaks away in the Parramatta game. Uh, I thought uh, the way he attacked the line in the Penrith game when he yeah. scored that try, some good signs for Turbo. So If they're proper contenders, they'll win. Who manly? This, yeah, this will be like this will be the gauge. This is my gauge off these these guys. If they can go to the Warriors right now and be con- and like beat them or just be like that far. This is my gauge for both yes. teams. Yeah, they're both oh, they're, in my uh, these. It's these two: the Brisbane and Penrith is the top four. Oh wow, that's my in, like, uh, like form wise, right? In yep. the last five six weeks, yeah, because they've shown how good they can be. Manly, they I just uh, need to put it all together. I did the uh, so my mate. Gave me a system and it's to do with blackjack. But basically you go um, a point. (laughs) It's a point for an easy win, zero for an undecided, and minus one for an easy – like you think they're definitely going to lose. So I did that with a few of the top teams. I come away with my minor premiership um, based off that system with the Warriors, Melbourne Storm and Panthers as my main candidates. They were were the top three. Mm. 
Melbourne Storm in in up by one game because I will have them with nine for me. Then everyone could be different, right? Yeah. With depending on how you view those games. But I had uh, Storm being the minor premiers yeah. with the Warriors and Panthers being in second and third equal. And because Warriors have got better for and against at the moment. But the one thing I didn't account for was I think the Warriors have a real opportunity. If they win this game in particular, it'll make it even stronger. But during the origin period. Yeah. They can get the minor looked, premiership. Look at all the teams. Uh, so Melbourne Storm most likely going to miss four players minimum during yeah. origin. Uh, Broncos roughly five to six. Uh, Penrith Panthers roughly five to six. Cowboys roughly four to five. Uh, Warriors, the two teams that should dominate during the origin period are the Sharks and the Warriors that are thereabouts now. Yeah. Now the Dolphins even. Like Dolphins are – Yeah, they'll a, only have Hammer out. They'll have Hammer. Um, who else? But I just don't – I just don't see the – Josie Flegler. Yeah, Flegler. Yeah. Josie Flegler. Um, yeah, that's so about that's about it. But I, I just don't see the, the Dolphins on that level with those other no, teams. the Warriors should win where all they of them. So I, I put some money on the Warriors to win the minor premiership at $15. Mm. The second game, and I can confirm this one is at 5.30 p.m. because it's at Parramatta Stadium yes. versus the North Queensland Cowboys. Uh, that is the Eels. Brad's made some big changes. Well, some – the wingers, but still, Mike Estevo has been a big part of their team for a long time now. He's been dropped. Morgan Harper yeah. goes into the centres. Uh, Bailey Simonson goes to the wing. Dijon, Dijon Arce comes into the halves. Uh, Blaise Talangi is 18th man. Bryce Cartwright is back from a rib injury, so Kelma Tualangi goes to the bench. And woo-woo, Greg loses his spot in the 17 after only one week. As for the Cowboys, Zach Labatt out for the season ACL. Tom nah, Chester in. Um, our partners at the tab have Parramatta $2.25 underdogs at home. North Queensland dollar sixty five favourites. The line is minus three and a half. So a try. What do you think? Of, what do you think the changes would be? Hey? This is, so, is, this, is, this, is this panicking or what? This is really nah. I like it. You like it? I like it. I I don't know what changes you could probably make outside of it. Mike Sivo clearly Sivo, looked injured. Yeah, he was hobbling. Did you see him yeah. in kick returns in that yeah. Canberra game? He was like hopping back towards the mm. line. So he's, I know he's, he's been injured. dropped. But he's he also injured, yeah. is clearly injured or something's happening as well at the moment. So Dijan Arce, the, the man for six. Dijan Arce looked Morgan good Harper, in some games. Beggett, better centre than um, the young kid, Talangi. So it's not necessarily with Talangi. Yeah, um, he's, he's pretty close, mate. Yeah, Luke, you say move, move close to the mic. It's um, pretty close. Yeah. Um, Blaze Talangi, does he is he, has he been given a fair shot at centre? Is he a centre? Because he's definitely not a 5'8". He didn't look comfortable with 5-8 no, in his first two games. fucking hard position to play. He looks second good. Second game, he's all right. Center, I yeah. think he's a center. Yeah. Leave him in the centers. So I would have done that. Yeah, that's the only That's the only thing I've got. That's the only thing I would have done. Yeah, yeah, I would have done that. Um, whether BA's seen something in a training where, you know, he's still 19 years yeah, old, so baby. maybe yeah. uh, he's seen some signs of, you know, a bit of wear and tear mm. or the effects of the losses um, starting yep. to weigh down on him. Uh, there seems to be heaps, heap of chat around uh, the young kid, Ethan Sanders, yeah. who is apparently about to sign at the Raiders. Big all, raps on him, isn't it? Yeah, all the Parramatta fans are screaming for this Sanders kid, but uh, there must be – there's been reports that there's an uh, unsettling between maybe Brad because he's moving on. Uh, that so sucks. If that's the case, then that's disappointing because you just want to see the, the best young players coming through. You think your coach will put the best player in there available? Yeah, but so you also games. understand that's not always the case. We've all been in teams, oh, mates. We want to win games, man. Yeah. Would not care. I mean, and, but he's not tried and tested. And he doesn't guarantee this win. This doesn't guarantee just because he's got a big name. Like, I hope the kid has a great career, but like, fuck, I've heard of a, a, a heap of gun schoolboys yep. get to first grade and get monstered. I think when um, people now look at like the uh, success that Ethan Strange and Lachlan Galvin are having. Ethan Strange is the dude. He is. Yeah. They're both physically ready. Yeah. Like that, that Strange kid. Fucking hell. He loves it. Mm. He's going to be his future rep player. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I agree, mate. A little he's, bit of Munster about him, man. He's got a bit of when money Munster, When Munster, was, does when Munster hit the scene him. and he was strong already, mm. yeah. when he got that real Mongo strength, mm. that's what this kid's got. Yeah. When he comes off his left foot and he, and he shakes you, I'm like, he shouldn't be able to do that. You're 18. Mm. Shaking grown men off. Yeah, he's looking good. But let's left load. He's got let's stay on Parramatta. We'll get to him to finish right, off. I just, I got, he's my I, man. I love him. Yeah, well, I got him later on as well. Where are you going on this game, mate? Cowboys. Cowboys? Yeah. I'm, reluct I'm, I'm reluctantly but going the Cowboys. Minus it's going to be a high-scoring game like, as, you, as you pick. Yeah. I think it's going to be like 38 to 32 or something like that. 
if if Cowboys are the team who I envisioned at the start of the year because I had them in the top four, now mm. they're sitting in there, but they haven't been convincing. Yeah. Uh, they've actually let me not let me down. What's the word? I've been disappointed in mm. the Cowboys because I expect with their roster, mm-hmm. I believe they've got one of the better rosters in the competition. And although their position in the ladder is solid, I haven't seen the performances that I. They can complete it eighty percent. They will win most games. They'll win. They're most sitting games. around about sixty something percent. It's not good enough for the Cowboys. It's not good enough for any team. And they're still in the top four, so mm. they're doing way more tackling than they should be. Yeah. The middles will be start looking at the fucking outside backs, going, "Come on." There's pros and cons in that too, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're not playing great and they're still in the top yeah, four. Yeah. Like, so they'll be looking at that going, we've completed 80 plus, boys. Yeah. We'll win most games. be very hard to Because we have the attack that's fucking relentless and we can score from anywhere. Yeah. So I think that'll be their goal this year, this All right. week. Uh, the next game is for the last game of Super Saturday, South Sydney Rabbitohs versus Cronulla Sharks. It's at a core. Um, so a couple of depu- – or oh, one debutant. Jai Gray will make his debut, mate. He's a little uh, pocket rocket fullback. For I watched him in New South Wales a couple, uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's only small in stature, but he got better as the game went on. Another sm- guy small in stature is the hooker, Peter Mamazoulos, who has been named at nine with Damien Cook dropping Fuck, to 18th. Can't man. Believe that. You're not happy with that, mate? So let me finish off, though. Tyron Murray comes onto the wing for Isaac Thompson. Tellus Duncan and Sean Kepi have been shifted off the bench. With Shaq Mitchell, Saliva Havili, and David Mawa- Davy Mawale all named on the bench. As for the Cronulla Sharks, Britton Nikita returns, shifting Talakai to bench. the bench, and Kale Iro uh, keeping his spot yeah. in the starting lineup. Well done to him. I like that. Yeah, he, look, he looks good. Uh, Braden Hamlin Uwale has also been named on the extended bench for the first time. He's <sighs> got stronger. This is, this, is, this is the dagger right in JD's heart. Not happy with the Damien No, I'm not Cook. happy with Damien Cook getting dropped. Mm. Jeez, he's been one of the premier nines in the game for close to six or seven years. Mm. He's been the heart and soul of that team. He there doesn't was- deserve to get dropped. He hasn't been playing that bad. He made some clean line breaks against us a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Yeah. He hasn't been doing that much. He hasn't been doing anything wrong to be dropped from the 17 in, a, in an underperforming side. You know what I mean? Why, why, is, why, is, why is he picking on Cookie like that? I said, Cook, you can nullify Damian Cook by not going by null, by getting their forwards and dominating the middle. Mm. Haven't been dominating the middle, therefore Cook doesn't run that much. Correct. You know what I mean? But he's not doing anything bad. He's not missing tackles. He's not been. He hasn't deserved to be dropped. I think it's just fucking. This is stupid. I'm looking trying at trying to lose the game. I looked at um his oh his stats from last week, and although they got pumped, it was like. I didn't like. I watched the game, but I, I can't remember thinking during the game. Damien Cook was having an awful game. I've never looked at him and just gone, "Yeah, he's costing you the game." Sixty-three minutes, seven carries for sixty-three, which is his, his strength. Uh, he's probably because he set the bar so high. You you think he's yeah eighteen post contact meters, um, but where is it? He made he made forty five tackles, mate, with one miss. With tackle efficiency, 95%. Okay, and that deserves to get dropped. That's See weird, that? eh? That's stupid. That's so weird. And this is this is why I just, you know, this is probably why he's not going to be coaching next week. <laughs> he's making decisions like that. You don't do that. If, if Cookie's missing 10 tackles a game, he's getting spotted up, he's not running at all, his average meters is below 20, you know, like that's that means he should be dropped. You know what's a stat that people don't realize? I think, well, maybe, I think everyone's starting to clue onto it now though. Yeah, miss tackles and miss tackles, and you don't want to miss to miss tackles. But when you have a nine that has a tackle efficiency of ninety five percent, drop him. You're yeah. stoked with that, eh? Mate? Yeah, I want the and, and especially because he's not noted as one of the best. Of, he's not like a Robson. He's not like a a Kenny. Hitter. But he still goes good. Yeah. He makes his tackles. If you're ninety percent efficiency tackle, and you're running like that, and he's probably the most dangerous person on that field. Mm. But they need to go forward for him. Mm. Your front rows like your front rows aren't finding their stomachs getting. Um, Getting quick play the ball so we can get out and attack like Damien Cook does. Like, he doesn't deserve to be dropped. And I'll be fucking, and I'll be the first one to say, yeah, yeah, he's been down. Yeah. He's been off. He hasn't been off. Yeah, I don't think he, he's a player that, it's again similar to Elias. Like, he's not. He's an issue. origin player, an Australian player. I'm going the Sharks minus 10 and a half. Fuck, straight. Sharks will pump him. Absolutely pump him. Is this your 13, 13 plus? plus, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, someone messaged us in the comments, you were Warriors last week, yeah, 13 plus. Yeah. So you're picking on the rabbit. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I um, just think when you're down, you're down, man. Yep. Confidence. And you can't, have a, you can't have a nine like that, the young kid who's coming in, no disrespect. And Jeez. new fullback, rookie fullback yeah, too. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to Dry Gray. That's, that's the spine. Shout that's out the to Dry Gray. Congratulations on yeah, your Yeah, well done, guys. But yeah. like, hey, you're going up against the fucking Sharks team. It's just what they come off a bye. 
coming off a bye. Yeah, fresh and as fuck, got new troops by coming back in and they're ready the to roll. Yeah. I know what Fitzy's like, mate. Yeah, I think. It's personal with him. He hates the fucking, they're go he hates the South because of his Roosters days. Yeah, true. So don't worry about that. And when the foot's on the throat, he's fucking, it's, it's down. And they're going to go through the middle and go through the middle. Bang through the front door. And go through the middle. Yep. And they're going to get their wingers to go through the middle. Yep. And they're going to see if South No secret. What are they going to do? Can you stop us? Um, and I think just because he missed a couple of weeks, he's going to want to make up for it. Britain Nicara, anytime yeah. try score at three dollars twenty five. Sharks minus ten and a half. Uh, let's move to the games on Sunday, mate. West Tigers versus St George Illawarra Dragons. This will be a tough one to pick. Mm. Alex Seafarth has replaced John Bateman in the back row. Uh, Bateman's out for concussion. Sam Fuella Fainu uh, and Latu, and his brother Latu also missing the game due to injury. Therefore, Asu Kapoa, Justin Matamua, and Jake Simpkin have been named on the bench. As for the Dragons, Michael Moller has been dropped with Jack DeBalance shifting to the bench for Hamas Saleh. Right, this is a hard one. Yeah. Where's the it tab have got at? Campbelltown. This is the C-Town. Oh, C-Town. I have to go with the Tigers. Tigers are beat there. Dollar eighty, the Tigers are favourites. St George Illawarra two dollars. The line is plus one and a half. So very, the tab can't yeah. split it as well. I struggled to do it. I am going the Dragons plus one and a half because I think if it's a coin flip, I'll mm. take a yeah. Maybe the course. maybe the Tigers win by eight and sees a field goal, and I still get my half a point. <laughs> and Ben oh, Hunt, Ben Hunt is normally good at scoring against the lower ranked teams. Yeah. So give me Ben Hunt anytime at four dollars twenty five. Yeah, but not confident. I think at all. Big Stefano Clem. Papali, their packs, they're, they're, they're good, man. Because they've got enough class in the outside backs to get the job done. They should they should win this game. If they're, if they're thinking that they're the team they should be, they should win this game. Yeah. But saying that, it's fucking very inconsistent. Yeah. St. George could fucking throw. I don't know what St. George is going gonna, is gonna to turn up. The Dragons are the hardest team oh, to pick. Oh, they're hard, mate. In the competition. Um, Canberra Raiders versus the Gold Coast Titans. We are talking about Ethan Strange before. Uh, there's a new young kid. He's his roomie too, by the way. I, I uh, do the run club on Tuesdays with his uncle. Yeah. Chevy Stewart is making his Chevy. debut. What um, a name. Imagine Chevy Stewart and Ethan Strange getting about <laughs> down in fucking Canberra <laughs> at the moment. They replace, they, uh, he replaces Jordan Rappin, who's been sidelined with that knee injury that was bothering him yeah. all game. What a tough prick, man. Ata Mariota has moved back to the bench for Zach Hoskin, who was arguably the – Forward of the competition for the first three weeks uh, when he was starting. He uh, Corey out. Horsburgh has the been bars out with the groin. Yeah, he's getting that fucking. Awful. He's getting that groin rubbed on the sidelines as well. Uh, Trey Mooney a heap of skin just showing a heap of heap. skin. The horse, the bra don't care. Yeah. He would have been nude and he wouldn't have cared. See, he was smiling he on camera. You know, he, knew he was loving it. He knew where the camera was. He said, "Let me face that way," he, and then rub my groin. The physio goes, "You want to <laughs> take you inside?" Goes, no, no, let's do it right no here. No way. <laughs> uh, let the boy watch. Let the boys watch. <laughs> Trey Mooney, um, they really want to keep him down at Canberra. He's a player of a heap of potential. Yeah. He comes in for Horsburgh. And I like Simi, what they're doing, man. Sasungi, they've got some nice pieces down yeah. there. Hey, I, we need yeah. to apologise to Canberra. Did you have them in the bottom top bottom eight as well? No, they were I had, I didn't, not, not in the bottom four. No, we're near They were in my bottom four. They were four. in there. They're, 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 they're a six, six – they could be six to 12, I reckon. Okay. Somewhere like – because it's going to be hard getting in the top eight this year. Yeah. Because we don't I – can't, I can't get a gauge on anything now. No. Only the top four. Maybe five. As for the Titans, Isaac Lewis joined the bench with Jay Stimson making way. Uh, Fozzie still named to play. I, I don't know. Is this in Canberra? Yeah, it's in this Canberra. It's going to be ugly. It's Sunday night in Canberra. Yuck. <laughs> it's fucking 10 degrees. It was 10 degrees this morning. Yeah. What is it in Canberra? It's near zero. It's near zero probably. If I you're If you're the Gold Coast Titans I'm who – I'm going down game day. <laughs> I'm going down game day, yeah. chartering a flight, boom, straight in there, bus, bang, play, out. Canberra Raiders are favourites at $1.34. Siege mentality. Gold Coast are $3.30, understandably, for their form of late. The line is eight and a half. I think I know where it's you're going in this, mate. bash up, mate. Yeah, I think this is another big win for like Canberra down Canberra, there. Canberra, like, you know what? Fuck these guys. That's a, it's a Ricky Stewart attitude yeah. adjustment. Yeah. It's cold here. They, they want, don't want to be here. They They're from the Gold here. Coast, these pretty boys, this, this. Even though none of them from the Gold Coast. Yeah. He'll run it into them. But yeah. they want to go fucking surfing. Born and bred. <laughs> Gold Coast. All, all of them are from fucking Burley. Get a Burley pav every fucking weekend with surfing all the Sheilas. Fucking Instagram, this and that. <laughs> <laughs> and none of them are on Instagram. <laughs> but that's Ricky Stewart. Hey, I'm the Raiders minus eight and a half, and I like that young strange kid. He should have scored last week. Fucking yeah, Xavier Savage drew him like past. But, uh, so Come I think on, he Savage. This week. I like Savage. I like Savage. Love him. Right. Um, looking forward to the weekend. Uh, one sec. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need frank confidential support, call 1 800 858 858. 
Joy Foodie.